is my WWE Backlash 2020 recap and reactions. And for you guys, I have all the matches that just went down. And that match was just so good. And a very well put together match. Just like this past Friday's, Friday night SmackDown's match between Dave and Ryan and AJ Styles. If only that match was part of the pay-per-view. If only that match was part of the match card. I think it belonged. I think it was good enough. And uh, two well-known superstars, two well-known uh, competitors, AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. I think that should have been on the match card tonight, tonight, just along as well as uh, this match that we just witnessed between Randy Orton and Edge. But I'm gonna get into that later. That was just very well put together. I'm gonna talk about just everything that they pulled, pulled off during this match, and uh, definitely worth the watch. Out of every match card, every, out of every match from tonight, I think that was the best match. But I'm just gonna start from the beginning from the kickoff show and then we're gonna work our way down all the way throughout the main show for this event for tonight. Um, we only had one kill, uh, kill kickoff match between Apollo Crews and uh, Andrade uh, for the United States Championship. So Apollo Crews finally being able to get a championship and uh, after always being someone that's sitting in the back, barely not even getting any sort of matches during these shows week after week. And uh, even when he does get some matches, Way before, prior, before he even became a United States champion, uh, he would always lose. So it's nice to see that they're finally giving him a championship, and now he's a, uh, a title holder. And uh, I'm not sure how long he's going to probably last, how long his reign will last, but at least he has a belt now. And uh, he was able to still uh, retain against Andrade. And uh, tonight, Andrade was on loan, of course, because it seems like they're almost going to break up um, Angel Garza. And um, Andrade, but as you already, as you guys probably, if you guys been watching the show, Austin Theory is not even part of the stable anymore, so he's part of uh, the Money Night Messiah, uh, Seth Rollins, um, being in control of what he does now. So now it's just going to be Andrade and Angel Garza and Zelina Vega, but uh, I see that I see this not lasting very long because it seems like Zelina is going to probably favor it, uh, favor Andrade at least for the stable that they have going on and uh, during the match. Of course, Garz is going to get involved. He ended up getting involved in the match, but uh, Kevin Owens was out there to give Apollo Crews some backup, so it wouldn't ruin the match. So it definitely helped Apollo retain the match, retain his title. And if he wasn't probably out there, he probably would have lost that title. But um, that's the kickoff, just really quickly. But uh, that was our only match for the kickoff match. Uh, kickoff show um, as I said and everything else is just like a build up for every all the matches that are scheduled for tonight so let's get to the main show and uh, I'm going to run through these the women's tag team championship between Bailey and Sasha and Banks uh, defending their, their tag titles against the Iconics Iconic I like that with just uh, Nikki Cross <laughs> Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss also uh, being competitors in this match. So it was a triple threat. Sasha Banks and uh, Bailey defending their titles against Nikki Cross and um, Alexa Bliss along with uh, the Iconics. So I already, seen, I already saw that Bailey and Sasha Banks were going to really retain their titles. So it's no surprise that they're going to really end up winning because they just got the titles and uh, they're probably going to hold these, these uh, tag titles for the women's division for a while. And uh, unless another team ends up joining in on this so we'll have to see what they do maybe Carmella and Dana Brooke will find their way into this in this tag team match or we'll, we'll just have to see but um I was gonna throw this out there even though they did retain I just see later on going in the near future um once they lose these tag titles it'll it'll start a feud between Bailey and Sasha Banks and since Sasha has yet to hold that women's title the Smackdown Women's Championship is the only title she needs to hold so um I think she's gonna eventually end up winning it whenever they decide to have Sasha turn on Bailey at some point. So I think the beginning, uh, the beginning or the end of their friendship or their connection will be when they lose these titles, these tag titles, and that'll be the beginning of uh, everything when they start doing a feud between Bailey and Sasha at some point. But I guess I don't see that happening. Maybe not another two events. We'll have to wait. Two pay reviews. Um, our next match, Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy in a one-on-one -on -one match. I thought Jeff Hardy had this in a bag. Just everything that he's been through and just his whole redemption story. I don't, I don't know how to, how to really react to this because I guess since Sheamus ended up winning by surprise, I just thought Jeff Hardy was going to win this for sure. 
and uh, just to stay with him. Since Jeff Hardy just came back not too long ago, not, not, not too long ago, and then maybe he just thought he would probably end up getting this momentum and then maybe eventually finding his way into a Universal Championship match on SmackDown eventually. But um, at this rate, now the series between them, Jeff Hardy already beat Sheamus once prior to this event, prior to Backlash. Now Sheamus ends up beating ends up beating him tonight. It's one to one now, so I think now it, uh, the story is going to build up. We'll just have to see what they do. But I, I don't think this is over. This is this can't be the end of Jeff Hardy unless he ends up going to AEW like Matt Hardy. But we'll just have to see what what they decide to do with this. But uh, if not, uh, this story was going to go on still, and maybe it, it'll be an additional stipulation, maybe a last man standing match, a steel cage match a no disqualification match or something like that and since the next event is going to be extreme rules i think they're going to really go crazy on each other during that um that event because extreme rules no, every anything goes so that's just my little prediction just going toward, forward for that match and for that uh, feud between jeff hardy and shamans even though he didn't win tonight so we got our raw women's championship uh oscar versus Nigel. I think this was the worst match. This was a bad ending. It ended up in, in a double count up between Oscar and Nia Jax. No definitive winner. And uh, of course, this is going to still go on. And I think it's probably going to be more to come at Extreme Rules. And it's probably going to be more stuff going on tomorrow tomorrow night during Monday Night Raw. But um, this was not a good way to end it. I don't know why they even try to write this in for the story, at least for this this match between Asuka and Nia Jax. You have her build up and just get her prepped up as if she's gonna you probably have the chance to stand over and just conquer Nia Jax, a returning Nia Jax that was um, fit for this, for this kind of match, for a championship match and uh, all that stuff. So I think this was the worst match and just for tonight for sure, no definitive winner. A double count out, it, it just didn't even last that long. So let's get to the next one. So when you when it comes to count out, you just can't lose the title. The 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 champion, whoever the champion is, can't lose the title. They they have to win, uh, in the ring, via uh, via submission or pinfall. So that's it. that's that's it for that match. Uh, the Universal Championship, obviously, Braun Strowman ended up retaining against Miz and Morrison, but just from watching this. Uh, Miz, I think they probably almost it made it seem like they had a chance when John Morrison had the the cover on Braun, but Miz ended up pushing him off of Braun Strowman, and uh, it seemed like it took longer for him to pin, and it allowed Braun Strowman to kick out uh, during his two on one handicap match for this Universal Championship, and maybe this will slowly be be the end of Miz and Morrison. Maybe down the line they'll end up going against each other, and they'll probably end up going their oh their own separate ways, wanting a championship match. Or maybe going against one another. We'll see how that plays out. I I don't know about anyone else out there when you want to watch this. I was anticipating either maybe a, a possible Otis cash in, or maybe a tease, a possible Otis cash in tease, or maybe some time some kind of a fiend return. Cause there's no way he can be done. Bray Wyatt in his original form. He's not even. He wasn't even the fiend at the, at that point during that match. So I think he's probably going to be his next. Uh, title in his next challenger for Braun Strowman if uh, someone else doesn't end up challenging maybe he'll come back to Honor next week or this coming Friday to want back at uh, Braun Strowman because he can't be done with him I just I don't even see how they just even threw in Miz and John Morrison in this match I guess they didn't have anything to do with this with this particular championship match or for any sort of challengers but I was hoping he maybe oh this will probably try to cash in to tease him again or maybe just uh, the fiend to come out. Like he, we didn't get none of that tonight. So let's get to the WWE Championship. Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley. Uh, I thought Bobby Lashley would probably have a chance to win, but I ended up knowing that Drew McIntyre is going to retain. He did, he's just he's still a new title. He still has the title, and uh, it's still fresh on him. I'm, I'm hoping that he keep, he has a decent run. So I'm kind of glad he returned. He retained tonight. Lana, as I expected was going to come out there and interfere. She's the reason that really cost Bobby Lashley this uh, this match because she got in the way trying to distract uh, distract Drew McIntyre, but just ended up being a distraction to both MVP and Bobby Lashley uh, overall. So because of her interference, it allowed Drew McIntyre to claim more Bobby Lashley and just retain his championship. So I wonder who's going to be next in line to get Claymore. 
so we'll have to see. Um, Raw Tag Team Championship. It was originally supposed to be a championship match. It's, this was it's just really silly. I don't really have to talk about it, but I'll just share it anyway. This was supposed to be a Raw Tag Team Championship match between the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders, or the War Raiders. They're, they're still the War Raiders from NXT for me. They just changed their name. But this turned out to be a parking lot brawl, a parking lot brawl, and just all types of silly stuff going on with ninjas and uh, I guess Titus O'Neil was one of the ninjas with the holding one of the, the swords, one of the uh, swords, and then Akira Tozawa was in charge of a biker crew, a, a biker crew that's, that were in ninja suits. That was it. it was just it was really silly to see. But um, we'll get on to our main event. Uh, so that that match never ended up happening. So we don't have a Raw Tag Team Championship match. Maybe we'll get that tomorrow. It just ended up being in a silly stable with everything going on. But let's get to the greatest wrestling match ever. I think this is one of the best matches uh, I've seen in a while. But uh, I don't know. I still like that AJ, AJ versus Daniel Bryan match a little bit more than this match. But this was really catching up to it with everything that they were doing. This was a very well put together match, if not the best match in the event. Randy Orton versus Edge in a wrestling match, a regular match, and uh, of course, rules are the same rules. With uh, you can you getting disqualified for doing any, using anything outside the ring, like a chair or whatever. So the basic rules. But I took a couple notes here. I liked the different things that they were doing. They were pulling all these different well-known legends from the past and uh, from the past and present, and all the ones that you guys probably know of. Even some of you guys out there who used to watch the show. And um, some of the moves that I listed that I, that I caught. Uh, Eddie Guerrero's Three Amigos. We got Ric Flair's Chops. The Ric Flair Chops that uh, they were doing against each other. The Angle Slam. Kurt Angle's uh, finishing move. The Angle Slam. Uh, the Cross Face. Uh, Christian's Unprettier. The Triple H's Pedigree. The Rock Bottom. Uh, and then just some other things after that. But those are the ones that really caught my eye. I didn't really recognize the other ones. And they... Uh, uh, one more I almost forgot to mention, Randy Orton also did end up doing like a, a Ricky Steamboat drop kit. So that's the other one that uh, that they mentioned, or the other one that I almost missed and uh, to note here. But uh, after that, they just started exchanging their, their finishers as the match went on longer. One RKO for, uh, for, to Edge, a kick out, two spears to, uh, to Randy Orton, and a kick out, and then and just right after that, uh, it just to speed through the match a little bit, he ended up winning. Randy Orton ended up winning because he did a low blow, a sneaky low blow, and then he did that that infamous punt that he used to do against RVD, all those other uh, superstars back then during the Attitude Era. I think it was during that era when all those other superstars was on it, like Chris Masters, Carlito, and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's something, that's something else that I don't even think of. Bobby Lashley has the master lock from Chris Masters. It's pretty crazy. But uh, all those different things that he did to those other superstars in the past, it was a cool way to to end it. And all that, that the point that ended the careers and put other superstars from the past on the show for a good while, it, he ended up doing that to Edge. But when you think of it, yeah, he sort of cheated. Randy Orton did sort of cheat. But he did a uh, by doing a low blow. But him being around Ric Flair, the dirtiest player in the game, it was a cool way for him to do it. Do something dirty and do something that you are also well known for doing in the past. With uh, that punt that put so many superstars away, it was a good way to finish the match, I think. So he ended up getting away with it. The referee didn't even catch him uh, doing that low blow, that quick low blow on edge, and then finishing him off with that crazy punt that you could just see and witness a good sell it was really crazy but some of you guys that probably don't notice uh i also end up finding out that edge has suffered like a, a torn bicep a torn tricep uh from this match so i don't know what's going to happen tomorrow is he going to come back for another match i think that's it for him so i think his uh time in the spotlight is probably over for now but we'll have to find out what they decide to do tomorrow maybe he'll be ready to go by extreme rules for another shot at Orton, but this is a really this was a really well put together match. I really enjoyed, and out of all the matches, I would highly recommend the Edge versus Randy Orton match because it got so much hype and um, all the uh, legends talking about it. And uh, I think it really holds a candle to this past Friday night's uh, SmackDown's AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan's Intercontinental Championship match. 
and uh, I think it does hold a candle to it. But for me, I still enjoyed AJ and Daniel Bryan, Bryan's match slightly more compared to this one um, from tonight. But they were both great matches and uh, definitely worth the watch, if anything. So if you're going to watch anything over all the matches from tonight, I would definitely check that out from Backlash. So you don't have to watch anything else. I would, uh, I would just definitely recommend watching this 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 match between Edge and Orton. Definitely another classic that they put together. But... For me, the worst match, as I said earlier, is Asuka and Nia Jax. Just that ending was just not that good. They should have just had like a definitive, definitive winner for this, a double count out for this championship match. Why, why was the match even put on the match card in the first place for it to end like that? So I don't think that was a good idea from the writers. But uh, let me know what you guys think about the, uh, the event. I definitely enjoyed it for what it was. And uh, that match, that, that main event was definitely worth being in the main event uh, to me. And uh, definitely worth a watch. And if you guys haven't seen that SmackDown match between AJ and, and Daniel Bryan, you'll wonder why I wish it was part of this tonight's match card. I think it belonged there. I'm surprised they just didn't put it on there. It's just a match like that between two skilled uh, wrestlers in ring with great in ring ability between AJ and Daniel Bryan. I wish that was on tonight's uh, match card, but unfortunately it wasn't. But it was still was it was an okay, decent uh, event. But some of these matches, you just already just could tell what was going to happen. 